Welcome back to Assassin's Creed Valhalla. Today I'm going to be showing you one of the best armor and weapon builds that you can put together in the game. I'm going to be showing you all the locations for the armor, where the weapons are, and how this build is going to interact with the abilities and skills that you acquire throughout the game as well. This will set you up for a really great build, especially if you're playing on very hard difficulty to not only just play through the story well, but also sneak into higher level areas and just have a lot of fun with the combat because it does spice it up quite a bit. Now the first thing we're going to go over is the armor and weapons, then we'll get into these skills and abilities that we're going to use in this particular build as well. Now we are going to be using two sets of armor to utilize the two set bonus from each of these. We're going to use the Thane set and the Mentors set. Now the Mentor set is going to increase our attack after critical hits, and if we go into our details here, it's going to be up, be able to stack up to 5 times for a duration of 35 seconds. We're going to get 1.2 to 20 attack, which is very, very nice. Now the Thane set is going to increase our critical chance when parrying. So the bonus is going to be a plus 10 chance to our critical chance. Which is, which is nice, and then lose it when attacking from the back or attacking an enemy on the ground. Uh, so these two bonuses will really tie in well to increase your overall damage. Now, you can interchange whatever pieces you want. If you don't like the look of the Thane's armor, then you can swap out for mentors in certain spots, because uh, you do not have to use the exact same pieces. As long as you have the two set from the Thane's and the two set from the mentor's armor, then you're good to swap out however you want. Now I will go over where to get all of the pieces of armor here in a second, but we're going to touch on the weapons here real quick. There's a couple different combinations that I really, really enjoy. One of them is Fafnir's Fang, definitely one of the best spears in the game. Increased critical chance when surrounded by three or more enemies. Obviously this ties in with the rest of the build really, really well. And then, believe it or not, offhanding a hammer with a spear is really really good, especially when you're offhanding the blacksmith's hammer, which heavy critical hits knock enemies on the ground. That is so insanely powerful with the spear and hammer combination, because you will be knocking enemies to the ground with this build left and right and just stomping them to death. Now, obviously, the other combination would be instead of using a hammer, you just go ahead and use another spear. You can really use whatever other spear you want. Obviously, Odin's spear is going to be a great option. I don't have that one right now, but dual spears, probably one of the most powerful combinations in the game, but I do like spicing it up every once in a while with the hammer. So obviously, there are a lot of different weapons that you could use with this particular build, and you can tune it to whatever your personal playstyle is, but these are the ones that I use most often. But now we're going to go into unlocking all of this equipment. I want to show you all the locations for the armor pieces I'm currently using as well as the weapons that I've covered in this. Now if you do want to know where the locations for the full Thane's armor set and the full mentor set are, I'll leave links to those in the description below and in the pinned comments, but let's get into this. Now first up we're going to go to this little set of ruins here, the Temple of Brigantia, I think, in your Vishire. We're going to have to do a lot of swimming, so you really want to make sure you enter this in the right spots. Uh, so when you get over to here, you're going to see some statues in the water to your left with that big statue there. If you drop down right about here and get into the water and dive down, you're going to see the entrance to this underwater cave. This is where we need to go. We're going to need to go all the way through this. There we go. So when we turn this final corner, we're going to see it. I don't know if there's a, an exit on the other side of this, but I'm not going to really worry about it. Because as long as you dive down where I showed you, you should have plenty of air to be able to just swim back out. For the bracers, we need to go to the northern end of Northumbria. And on the north side of the Stenwig camp here is going to be our way to get into this campsite. Now you'll notice here, it just it's absolutely crazy if you look at this camp for the first time. But there's this giant tree here on the north side of the camp. There's also potentially some, like, I don't know if they're bobcats or some kind of lynx. Uh, but they're also in this area. You should be able to one-shot them with an arrow to the face. There's a couple different ways we can get in here. We can jump in through here, or we can sneak in through this under spot. We're going to go like this. We're going to sneak around the edge of these buildings. And we're going to try and get into this room here. There is a person right in the front. 
but we might be able to sneak right past them and just open the door. And right in this chest is what we need. The Thane's Bracers. Next up, we're going to have to head to Winchester. There's going to be a bishop residence here. If you approach from the eastern side and jump over the wall, uh, there's going to be a guy in front of this door. But you can sneak up from the back, jump up here, and then assassinate him. Especially if you have the ability that I mentioned earlier. It makes getting into this building much easier. Once you are in the building... You're going to go to the central spot and climb up. That door is going to be barred, and we need to open that door. To do that, we're going to go to this back room here. And then inside of this back room is going to be this that we can move. Move that bad boy out of the way. Then we're going to shoot uh, the thing off the barred door. Run back around. Easy peasy lemon squeezy. We've got the Thane's cloak. Now we've got to go to good old Snottinghamshire. Yeah. It's actually in the Sherwood Forest at the Sherwood Hideout. This one's pretty quick to get to, although the people in this area are high level, so I highly recommend maybe just running in, looting, and then running away. Because why not? It's easy peasy lemon squeezy. There's also a ton of really evil wolves around. Uh, so be careful of the wolves because they do not mess around. The next piece is also in Snottinghamshire. It's in this camp that is north along the river. Now this one you will have to fight people or at least one person to get the item. I went ahead and cleared out the camp because this particular... NPC will try and run away and just basically ruin everything. I got one dude that's still alive up there. Uh, but this particular NPC can be really, really annoying. Uh, so I went ahead and cleared out the camp. Once you open this up, it's going to try and run away. So I highly recommend doing whatever you can to try and prevent her or him from leaving which can be a couple different ways uh the rope is definitely a good choice oh yeah there we go easy peasy lemon squeezy you will need the key that that person holds to unlock the chest to get the mentor's cloak the final piece is going to be in the winchester garrison you are going to need at least one arrow. Unless you're a horrible shot, then you'll need more arrows. Uh, but we need to get to the garrison. We can try and do this completely stealthily. There is one guy kind of like right in front of where we need... Well, there's a whole bunch of people right in front of where we need to be. Um, but we need to actually open up a window first. Or um, do a thing first. So we're actually just going to run straight through here. And what we need to shoot... Of course, I can't see it. It is right there. Actually, can we see through it through this window? Yes, we can. There we go. We can open this door. Open that door, and then wham, bam, thank you, ma'am. We got the mentor's trousers, and now we just need to get out of dodge. Now, to get this weapon, you're going to need to head back to Norway. On the eastern side of the starting area, you're going to find the Hiddlesvinny's Crag. And right here is going to be a cave. When you go through this cave, uh, you're going to encounter a guy standing at the end of it. And there we go. We get Fafnir's Fang, the spear that we are looking for. To get the blacksmith hammer, you're going to have to go to London. Now, at London, there's going to be a Boldisburg garrison here. And what looks like a church. Now, you will need to get a key to unlock this chest. The key is on this woe bringer over here. Now, if you have advanced assassination, you can just run up and assassinate the dude. Now, once you grab the key, you can run to the back here and climb up these stairs. They're really not going to bother you all that much, but we need to climb up this tower. There's going to be a window that you can break right here. Or not a window, but a, a piece of the flooring. Just hop up here, and then you're going to find the chest in the back corner. 
Unlock that bad boy, and you got yourself the blacksmith hammer. Now this next one is in Winchester, which is a power level 250, but as long as you're careful and just ignore everyone, you shouldn't have any issues getting this next one. I even aggroed a whole bunch of people accidentally and was still able to hide relatively easily. Now we're going to be looking for this area right here. We can literally just jump right into it or not jump right into it. God, I hate how it automatically jumps across rather than going down. Oh my God. Man, see, you'll be all right. <laughs> Man. Like, yeah, I want to jump on top of everything, not into the nice safe water away from everybody. Uh, but once again, you just kind of got to navigate through here and figure out exactly where we need to. I'm just kind of winging it right now. I have no idea where I'm going, but it seems like we're going the right way. Maybe. We got some shiny bits in here. We got some loot. Looks like we might actually run out of air. Oh, nope. We have got some air pockets. And I believe we actually made it right <laughs> to where we needed to be, essentially. Nice. There are a couple different ways you can go about finishing this puzzle. If you move this door, there's going to be those bombs right there. But you'll need to grab those bombs and blow up this little rock wall, which will get you into the main bureau area, which will have the next piece of equipment, another codex piece, and plenty of other loot to be had. And we got the Tatunger's Claw. So we're going to go over skills and abilities pretty quick here. I highly recommend getting Advanced Assassination. It turns you into an actual assassin. You're playing an assassin's game. You need it. Then I really, really recommend Grit. If you ever get hit, then as long as you hit immediately after that, you can recover pretty much the entirety of the amount of health that you lost, which means you'll almost never have to use rations if you get really good at counterattacking and stuff like that. Uh, after that, then I definitely recommend getting Brush with Death. Easily one of the best skills in the game, and I can't think of a single reason to not get it, other than maybe the fact that you just don't want to slow down time and make yourself more survivable. Obviously, if you're going to be dual wielding heavy weapons, then you need the heavy dual wield skill, which is heavy into the bear tree. So you will need quite a few skill points to get over to here, but it's not too terrible, I suppose. Another skill that you'll probably want to grab is dual swap, uh, but the rest of these, you're just going to want to unlock whatever you feel is best for your personal playstyle. But those are the ones that I definitely recommend. Oh, another great survivable one is the last chance healing. You can get taken all the way down basically to zero health and you have a chance to heal yourself up before you'll die. Now, I do have a video where I go way more in depth into these abilities and where to unlock them. So if you are curious about this, definitely check out that video. I'll leave it in the description and in the pinned combat or comments. But Thorn of Slumber, absolutely amazing. Incredibly overpowered if you decide to cheese it. So I definitely recommend getting this one. Uh, another great one is going to be the Incendiary Powder Trap. This will be able to allow you to get into hidden locations without using exploding bombs, which is really, really nice. Then Feign Death can be incredibly cheesy at level 2 as well, where you can fake your own death and then pop up and assassinate high-level targets in one hit. Highly, highly recommend it. You're definitely going to want to also get Harpoon Impalement. You can one-shot people with this when they're at low health or if they are just a low-tier enemy. And then Flight of the Valkyries level 2 uh, not only does a ton of damage, but also stuns all enemies around you. Now, I do hope you all enjoyed today's episode. If you did, make sure to hit that like button. Also, let me know in the comments below what your favorite equipment, weapons, and builds are. And maybe I'll even make a video on that. I do have a couple other builds that I really enjoy, and I'll be covering those soon. But I definitely want to hear what the community loves as well. But thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you all in the next one.